fehlen. Okay, uh, welcome to this. It's probably going to be somewhat experimental. This is a reading from uh, minutes of the German Parliament's inquiry into the NSA surveillance. And um, we hope to bring you some of the content and maybe some of the background that you might be missing. Okay, this was just a test whether you're all awake. Yeah. We'll start again. They say on the stage. And I'll just add from the translation booth that this is the translators from C3 Lingo. That's our Twitter account and our hashtag is C3T. And we'd love to hear from you. are not valid, applicable in space. A reading from the NSA Parliamentary Committee of Inquiry into uh, by the German Bundestag. Mandate of the investigation. A committee of inquiry is established. The committee is to consist of eight members and eight deputies. The committee instigated by press reports, in particular uh, the constants of the Snowden revelations into telecommunications surveillance uh, from the time up starting from early 2001, to what extent secret services of the so-called Five Eyes states uh, have uh, captured communications from towards through Germany and uh, in what way data was evaluated by the states or third parties and to what extent the, the German government and the German Commission on Security in, in IT knew of these activities or take, took measures against that. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I will now open the first session of the Committee of Inquiry of the 18th Parliament. Um, the Committee of Inquiry uh, will take its evidence in public sessions and the public uh, is uh, publicity has been established and I will now welcome the members of the press in particular I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're here uh, supporting us with this important topic Günther Oettinger now the EU commissioner for the digital agenda and the functionaries Oh, says the slide. Süddeutsche Zeitung, leading German newspaper, 27th of November 2014. If you want to be sure to be left alone by the BND, the exterior secret service of Germany, you should not do one thing, go abroad and work for a German company or an international organization, because that makes you a functionary and therefore open fair game for surveillance. Um, if you communicate into another country, uh, the service will no longer care whether it's a German, a Belgian or whoever who's sending a fax uh, in the name of that organization. Um, the German person is only protected if he or she is communicating privately from, from the office. Uh, this is a construction that the BND came up with to be able to uh, spy on foreign organizations without uh, freely. Uh, the condition was working for a foreign company or an international organization. Uh, tell me, Mr. W.O., you have been working for the BND in Bad Aibling, the eavesdropping station, since 2005, and, and your task was selector uh, evaluation. If you got an address such as Günther.Oettinger at ec.eu, how would you deal with that? Well, Mr. W.O., how do you deal with that? Would you deal with that? Mr. W.O., we cannot hear you. Um, well, before you were tasked with uh, 
uh, a large scale selector evaluation, which was in 2013. Before that, uh, that address would be in our system. You have you have self-declared as a word database wizard or pope, and you have been dealing with selector filtering. Was Günter Ottinger on the selectors list before 2013, one that should not have yielded any results? We can't know whether it's on there. If we don't know an address, we cannot recognize it now or pick it out either. If it's just about an email address, yes, but Oettinger in itself is a term, a known term. It's it's a beer brand, for example. It's it's a German name. Oettinger is something we do not have as a search criterion. Mr. M, how do you know that Oettinger is not on the selector list? How can you exclude that? Uh, we will not discuss individual names here. This cannot be included. Couldn't you realize that the NSA wants to drink bad beer? Yeah. Mr. Heiss, uh, the Oettinger example keeps giving us joy, but let's stay on an abstract level. A German person working for a foreign company abroad, there is that differentiation on whether this uh, someone communicates professionally which means unprotected, unprotected or privately, right? Yes, that is the functionary theory, which is now being evaluated internally with us. Uh, but Mr. Heiss, what if a German works for an EU institution? How then would you regard that as a secret service coordinator in the chancellery? This could be discussed, but we haven't decided on this yet. Herr Karl, Mr. Karl. You've said that the U.S. were not a surveillance target. Is it still possible that selectors towards the U.S., uh, that they could be targeted at the U.S., or would that be a problem on the uh, on the BN? I cannot give any information on concrete telecommunication criteria. I didn't ask in a concrete way. I, I was asking in a general way. If a telecommunication uh, pattern uh, what, what, uh, was to be connected to terrorism. Hang on, Mr. Carr. Uh, you are expressing the view that Mr. Szypanski said, if a French person is a jihadist, is it French citizenship that's in the foreground? Yes. So Mr. Szypanski is right? Yes. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Someone thinks uh, that you're right there. Mr. Carr, is that the case with Germans too? If someone is a functionary jihadist, well, uh, you'll have to differentiate here between an, uh, someone abroad and whether the G10 law, which uh, restricts the f secrecy of telecommunications, whether that applies. Mr. Gaulich, before you uh, are uh, questioned by our community, you can have an, have an introductory statement about the whole thing if, if you want. Thank you, Mr. Uh, head of the committee, I want to make use of that opportunity. I have uh, compiled a report. In the last few months, I, I, I looked at 50,000 uh, selectors that were rejected by the NSA, and I have talked about those in the report. I worked in the BND office because I was dealing with strictly classified material. Uh, which is why I also had support by the BND. How, so how was that number of selectors arrived at, which I was looking at? All selectors uh, were filtered by the DAFIS system. Um, 40,000 selectors were rejected, and the DAFIS system uh, for reasons of secrecy, I can only talk about in a very broad sense. There are three stages. The first stage uh, filters out German telephone area codes and top-level domains. The first stage is the so-called G10 positive list, uh, which is derived from experience. All cases to be checked where the BND has noticed that German su subjects are behind them, are on that stage. The third stage filters selectors 
that could violate German interests. This is the one that is most difficult and that has, has historically grown. It was always uh, extended when uh, employees of the BND saw cases that did not belong to either stage one or stage two. Mr. Graulich, have members of the European Parliament been spied upon? I cannot talk about details of those selectors. That's not in my purview. Mr. Graulich, has a German member of the European Parliament legally protected from being surveilled? That's a good question. Thank you. Of course, European fundamental rights apply, but I haven't checked that. I would say that from the point of view of the German constitution, it's probably not. Mr. Gaulich, if targets such as EU institutions, governments of under other European mem EU member states, uh, with the help of the NSA and the BND, were uh, conducting espionage, how would you uh, evaluate that? Well, I think that your wording is not quite correct. Uh, to call that help or support for the NSA is not something I would share. I don't much care about that. I'll, I'll repeat, has the NSA, with the help of the BND, been conducting political espionage? From an international law point of view, espionage is permissible. I do see no violation of the law here. Mr. Graulich, you say that espionage is allowed in any form. Yes. But not everything that's allowed is forbidden. Do you see the fundamental right of secrecy of communications as violated by the NSA? As far as I see, no. And in Germany, no. Mr. Graulich, part of what you wrote in your expertise it has been written by the BND as well. Isn't it, do you, don't you see it as a problem that this hasn't been marked? In particular, sentences that you straight copied from, from the NSA, shouldn't that have been marked? You are uh, assuming things, you're not asking me questions. Herr Graulich, Mr. Graulich, do you think it's okay if an expertise by the DND is, uh, appears verbatim in your expertise? Well, those parts just comply with my own views. The first has. Um, found for the following. Now, this is about in, um, curing Ed, Edward Snowden as a witness. So, when will Mr. Snowden come? Der Spiegel, leading German news magazine, uh, 2014, December, I think. The BND uh, has cooperated with another large US service to capture data from Germany. In 2005, the BND contacted the German daughter of, of the US provider NSI and, and asked for communication data from their subsidiary in Dusseldorf. This international company then checked with their uh, American headquarters and agreed to a cooperation with the involvement of the American service NSA. The data were uh, copied from the provider's office to a BND office and, and then processed. At that point, uh, that uh, office had the cover name uh, Ionos, uh, the uh, 
Herr Pofalla. Mr. Pofalla, who was the chief head of the German Chancery, do you know Claude Teich, which is the cover name, one of the cover names that was mentioned in that Spiegel report? Mr. Pofalla, I asked you whether you know Claude Teich. I'll spell it out for you, G-L-O-T-I-A-I-C, Glotaik, which stand, the last three letters apparently stand for NSA. Uh, good day, Mr. F. You are the leader of the BND office in Rheinhausen. In a Spiegel report, there's information about, uh, in, information about the Glotaik operation that was it's supposed to be to have taken place in that BND office. Is that true? This can only be discussed in in a closed session. Okay, I'll reword this. Do you know the Spiegel report about about Glotaik? I have read it. Yes, but you cannot confirm anything true. Mr. F, why aren't you going to talk about this? I have not given myself permission to talk. We, of course, place great value on permissions to talk. Um, now, concerning Aikona, there was an attitude that was friendly towards giving information. Is that now a change of mind by the government? We cannot even name the full name of the operation in the committee. Does the word glow or the, does the, <laughs> do the letters glow mean anything to you? Yes. From the period of investigation or from the newspaper? From the period of the inf investigation. Okay, Mr. F., uh, when then did you hear about it? Uh, for some time between 2004 and 2006, all right. And how did you learn of it? Um, that was through uh, an order from, from the headquarters. What was that about? Uh, well, that I cannot talk about in, in a public session. Okay, now back to the task from, from the headquarters. Were you, as the leader of, of this, this, this office, solely responsible for the execution of this, or were several BND people tasked with it, only in secret session? Was it about telephone, fax, or cable communication, not public? Um, was a communication that was not cable-based uh, investigated? No. So if, if I now just logically deduce things from that, only about cable-bound communications. Well, that is your conclusion. I cannot, in, in a public session, I can in a non-public session expand on this. Mr. F, was Glotaik a covered operation? Yes. What does that mean? I cannot say. But um, the covered operation, that is a fixed a technical term. Yes, well, that has budgetary reasons. F. Mr. F, does, is, is also is saying who knew about this operation included in this. Mr. F, who is not allowed to know about this? Anyone who was not concerned with this? Drones and the headquarters for inquiries, or difficult to translate what the slide says. The, um, hmm. Süddeutsche Zeitung, 21st of September 2015, death of a Camel, uh, Camel Shepherd. Um, a Somali um, was about 20, 50 years old when he was hit, uh, when, he, when he died near Mogadishu in February 2012. The body was ripped apart, but his face was still recognizable. Six of his camels were also ki killed. He was the victim of, an, of a U.S. drone attack, which would not have been possible without support from German uh, bases. In Rammstein, the data is being transmitted, and also there is a flight control center and a control center for drone attacks. The American drones and the German government, that apparently doesn't know anything. That's a long story. 
Stereotypically and routinely, the German government has claimed that they had no information about U.S. operations uh, or planned operations in, in Germany. They had no evidence for nothing. Like a small bo boy playing hide-and-seek who insists that he doesn't see his, his fat friend behind a tree, a joke. Now, you've probably noticed this already on the slides. Now we see the inquiring member of the committee, which is now the conservative member in this case, and the person being inquired, an ex-drone pilot of the US Air Force. My name is Brandon Bryant. I am 29 years old and a former drone pilot of the US Air Force. People were killed and I was part of that machine. Many innocents have paid a price for that. We all are responsible. In the future, to, to prevent similar things happening in the future, Rammstein in Germany made the killing possible. It was a signal relay base for the whole Middle East. Mr. Bryant, for what kind of signals, which data was transmitted via Rammstein? All data, every single bit of data that was exchanged between the airplane and, and the crew. Everything was routed via Rammstein. You even had to fire up a new satellite because signals from Yemen were not covered at first. So, Mr. Bryant, the drone operations did not go via other countries in Germany? Yes, exactly. Just to be sure, would a drone operation not have been possible to run by any other country than Germany because of the way the technical capabilities that are here. Yes, the technical capabilities are the real reason. And uh, it's also related to the place. There is a, an easy access. Whatever you want to have, you can get the information from Rammstein and s spread it in the easiest way, distribute it. Mr. Schulz from the German Foreign Office. To what extent does the German Foreign Office uh, know about Rammstein being responsible for controlling drones. The commanding generals in Rammstein have assured us that via Rammstein no drones would be controlled. In the previous session we had the witness Brian, Brendan Bryant and he confirmed what he said but he also said that Rammstein had a central role as a relay station for transmitting the data. I know the media reports, the ones from Bryant as well. We asked the Americans about this, but they didn't respond. Yeah, we well, what? Didn't they want to, or could they not? We were asking about press reports actively, and all that they said was they could not talk about operative details, operational details. Um, you surely know the, date, the sentence, we kill people based on metadata. Now, with 500 million metadata that the BND transmits to yes every month, can you, as the head of the Bad Eibling eavesdropping station, that they are used for drone operations, Mr. RU? Mobile phone cell data are far too imprecise to fly concrete drone operations. Drone. Uh, Mr. Bryant, um, I, I'm asking myself, well, I'm asking you uh, whether a drone can be directed towards a target from metadata. Yes. Where in this process is the mobile phone relevant? From uh, metadata, you can derive the geolocation. They help with target acquisition. Uh, my second uh, killing my second shooting was from metadata. We had signals from a uh, phone tracking and decided to shoot. If Germany passes on data, then that can be used to execute people. Herr Bryant. Mr. Bryant, uh, do you know cases like this? Yes, there is a case of which I know. Germany gave information to the S that led to someone being killed. People were killed via a drone strike. Mr. Bryant, was metadata used for this particular drone strike? Metadata was what Germany had previously given.
Die Zeit, 19th of March 2014, another German paper. Uh, the, the disputed BND unit will be dissolved. Um, the central central office for inquiries had been working for a long time and in November 2014 there had been reports about BND agents systematically uh, inquiring refugees in asylum homes or refugee homes and the results were shared with the US uh, which then were used among others for drone and, and, and fighter plane attacks and uh, the central, the headquarter for inquiry had played a central role because they led initial interviews and then intense interviews with suspects. Mrs. K, you were the former head of the uh, headquarters for inquiries. What was the task here with asylum seekers? Uh, to get, gather information about central policy issues and uh, issues of, of supply. Uh, and you had interviews from Germany and other countries from where well foreign secret services from the US yes um, have the US interviewers have conducted interviews uh, by themselves or where BND staff always present the rule in principle was that uh, there would be team interviews with the BND now from a staffing point of view that wasn't a hundred percent followed um, I will give you a document. Um, unfortunately, the um, obligation for mixed teams has negative consequences. The lack of German teams has negative consequences. And uh, Mrs. K uh, agreed to an intern taking the role of, of the German representative. Yes. Why did you agree to that? We thought we had a lack of staff and were looking for a way out. So we had experienced interviewers who were uh, experienced employees who were not interviewers or sometimes interns as well. Mrs. K. If asylum seekers were interviewed, what was the purpose that was stated to the interviewed people? I don't know. I never took part in an interview myself. Mrs. K, I find it surprising that you never took part in an interview. Yes. Have you never even listened or watched? No. Never? No. What did you do the whole day? Ich hab gesteuert. I controlled, I... Außerdem habe ich die Akten zu den Befragungen gelesen. And I read the files about the inquiries. Also, Frau K. Mrs. K, what would be a relevant information of particular value in such an interview. The mobile phone number of uh, a known terrorist? No. Information about uh, bread um, supply situation. Networks, terror cells, contacts are not asked for? No. Uh, it needs a secret service corporation to ask about bread prices? Well, Mrs. K, that surely is at least as interesting uh, about as information about militia leadership, or wouldn't you exclude uh, mobile phone numbers from, from the inquiry? I didn't understand that. Well, I repeat, um, would you, during an interview, seriously say that we do not want the mobile phone number of a terrorist. We would rather know about the bread price. I would be shocked if that was true. I, I hope that you're being paid to look for terrorists. If not, then I will no longer feel safe in this country.
I have some documents here that, that say something quite different about mobile phone numbers. I will give, hand them to you for the files. The classified documents, reference number has been said. You can see that in doubt, the bread price to me would be a collateral um, well, no, no, the, the bread price can actually lead to an, to an uprising. Do you really think that that was the big extra value that the Americans would have from a joint interview? Is that not something missing, Mrs. K? That was what the cooperation was about. So it would consist of nothing. You, that's what you're saying, right? Well, there was the um, participation of in the information gathered in Germany. Well, what kind of information about politics? So what the head of state of Syria would be or what? No, about the political mood. The political mood, is that not something you could find out yourself? Well, you can get some confirmation, couldn't you? Well, you know, Mrs. K, I am baffled. What you say there is beyond the truth. Perhaps you would just like to protect your authority. Mrs. K, uh, how during the inquiries were the results documented by audio tape, paper and pen? Paper and pen were our regular uh, work tools. With the Americans too, or did they have computers? They had computers too. <laughs> Mrs. K, the Germans as well? Yeah. Yes. I will explain, just to illustrate. As uh, an auxiliary tool, computers were used. Well, about the, the, the theme, the idea was Google Earth, perhaps. We asked, is this and that region the right one? Is this the location of a hosp hospital? Herr Bryant. Mr. Bryant, the American military secret services the, has sometimes worked in Germany without the BND uh, cooperation and, and been interviewing people and, and using maps. Have you ever seen such maps? Uh, was that relevant in, in the drone strikes that you were? Well, we were using Google Earth and satellite imagery to see operational areas. From which sources those were, I don't know. Mr. Bryant, did you ever receive material that uh, had been previously marked? Yes. Mrs. K, I will now hand you a document. Do you still say that no phone numbers were passed on to the US? Mm, I don't, I only would like to respond to this in a non public session. No, Mrs. K, you won't. So, are you, do you stick to. She's conferring. From my knowledge, nothing was passed on. But were phone numbers registered, Mrs. K? Now, on the basis of this document, I will. I'm pointing to your obligation to veracity. Well, perhaps numbers were registered. If you know this, Mrs. K, you have to say that. Otherwise, this is a false witness. You can only, of course, you can only remember what she says. Uh, you don't remember that telephone numbers were registered, no. Mrs. K, you started a sentence a moment ago and didn't finish it, and the sentence was not that no phone numbers were registered. She only said that because you very strictly asked her, to, I, as her legal counsel, object to this. 
I don't remember phone numbers being registered. Mrs. K, this seems to be like you're kind of covering yourself. Uh, we have information that data that you acquired was used to kill people. And then you say we cannot hand on the coordinates like that. This is about a drone strike, not about uh, a, an asylum seeker fainting. Um, have you registered phone numbers? I don't know. Have the Americans registered phone numbers? I cannot say. Have phone numbers ever been, were phone numbers ever discussed? It was not our task to ask about phone numbers. Mrs. K, from a certain point in time, has the BND only passed on scrambled geo coordinates? Well, the data wasn't scrambled. I don't mind how do you call it, how you call it, but from when on was this? That's that's what I want to know. I don't know. Well, we would be happy with just a little information. Was this at the beginning or the end of your term? Um, Mrs. K, was there a certain moment from which the data, the, the handing on of the data was changed, the strategy? Was that near the beginning or the end of your term of office? I don't know. So you were handing on f false data just like that. There was no false data. Uh, Mrs. K, have the Americans ever complained? As far as I know, no. How would they have known anyway? How could they have found out? For example, because they didn't hit their targets, it's getting less and less likely that you know why and, and when geo coordinates were manipulated. Mrs. K, we have information from secret files. We don't know quite well what the occasion was. Mrs. K, who died? I don't know. I don't believe that. We have asked you to Afghanistan, Syria and Iraq. What was the reason that geolocations were not used for target acquiry? What was the reason? I don't remember. We don't believe you. Mrs. K. Have you um, inquired with the uh, refugees? refugees? I don't remember. Well, Mrs. K, what is the legal base for your um, activities? The BND law, Mrs. K, that is not sufficient. You need to know if you're, if you had, if you weren't a, a, a legal person, um, you directed the office. No, I directed the cover-up operation. Mrs. K, this is really very uh, creative. Um, there has to be a law for this. Well, then you have to give me a law. Well, actually, uh, uh, so uh, let me check this. That's right. It could take a while. I would say there is no basis in law. It is apparently not possible for your house to find this law. At November 6, 2012, there was an email to you which mentions an internal coordination to a parliament uh, inquiry. For the protocol, this is the number. It's hard to find a base in law uh, to answer this. I cannot refer to paragraphs 4 for A um, and there are no other laws. It's par par paragraph 8 doesn't work either. 
Vermittlung an eine eigenständige Behörde gilt. Because it's uh, only for uh, transmission to other offices. Mrs. K, um, you've been here twice now. Um, how did you prepare for the second visit? Ich habe das I read the protocol of the first session. The shorthand protocol. Uh, did you talk with anybody? Well, primarily, I thought, uh, oh, Miss K, did you speak with somebody? Well, you always talk with somebody. Mrs. K, who did you talk to? Uh, we just talked in general. Uh, who did you talk with in general? Uh, with uh, former colleagues. Uh, are these colleagues still active? Uh, yes. Did you approach them? Well, we had private uh, conversations. Did these colleagues possibly read the live blog of netspolitik.org and ask themselves, Mrs. K, what's happening to you here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yes, we uh, We, uh, yeah, we came, uh, we talked about netspolitik.org. Well, look at that, this page just brings people together. I, uh, I would ask that the inquiry be uh, closed for today. Uh, Mrs. K, this is not, uh, you can't just ask for it. We need consultation here. Well, Hacker Jeopardy is in the other hall, taking place right now. Mrs. K, if, you, if, you, if you're unable to continue, that's fine. Oh, actually, that's right, I can't continue. Well, uh, Mrs. K, you ha you'll have to uh, assume that we'll uh, le uh, ask you again to appear. Süddeutsche Zeitung, Süddeutsche Zeitung October 3rd, 2013. The big ear of the BND. It's one of the most mysterious buildings in Bavaria with a big antenna. Um, they are listening all the way to Afghanistan, as they say. It's a difficult search for proof. Mr. A. N. You direct the BND affiliate in Gablingen. What sorts of traffic is being. Uh, sorry, in Gablingen. Uh, this is shortwave transmissions. I think this is classified. They asked exactly the right question. Uh, shortwave transmission is not part of this investigation. Yeah. Yes. Is it a uh, single um, transmission only, or is this a bulk uh, capture? That's not part of the investigation. Well, what would be part of the investigation? Uh, well, if Mr. Wolf of the uh, tells me, then this would be part of the investigation. No, this is not how it works. I would like to stay to uh, my um, Mr. N, the signals that you captured on shortwave, are these of military origin or of civilian origin? I will only talk about this in closed sessions. Well, that cannot be a state secrecy. Wikipedia talks about what shortwave is good for. If you're telling me it's military or 
civil that certainly won't harm uh, the security of the state of Germany. Well, just because Wikipedia says it, that's not a reason for me denying or confirming a fact. I'm asking you, in gen very general, as a technician, which other transmission other than shortwave are there? Well, this is not part of the investigation. I don't have to answer this. Um, I'll ask again. Do you know whether Gablingen has other ways of capturing things that is not part of the, the investigation? But we have inf information on this. You know, how, how, what sort of, uh, how many data are captured? This is not part of the investigation. Um, I ask for a uh, break in the con uh, consultation. Okay, you will get five minutes. But, Mr. Chair, well, that, that's not enough to go to the, uh, the canteen, but you get all the food that you need. But, Mr. Chair, uh, we are um, exhausted. Well, I'm going to get you some sugar so you perk up. Mr. N, was the antenna Gablingen a former U.S. Uh, entity? That wasn't a really hard question, Mr. N. Well, the question isn't hard to answer, however it is outside of the uh, period that we're talking about. Uh, Mr. N, Gablingen uh, was operated by the U.S. Army before it was given to the BNT. Well, that is before the periods that we're talking about. Well, uh, you, you leave a foot in the door, you never quite leave. Are there any other Americans in Gablingen or visit or maybe uh, appear covert? Well, that's a very general question. What does it have to do with the uh, investigation? Uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, we are looking at the cooperation of the BND with the Five Eyes organizations no matter how they're covered. So do um, Five Eyes employees come to visit? Well, if I have understood the investigation scope, it's um, data um, retention. Well, please, uh, please um, uh, Treat the witness the respectfully. I uh, also ask the uh, uh, the witness to uh, treat this, this uh, committee committee with respect. Uh, wait, we have to we have to stop this uh, this uh, investigation. Uh, uh, the name in the clear of the witness was just uh, uh, tweeted by a member of the left party faction, but. Actually, well, it was in the Süddeutsche Zeitung uh, 2013 already. So tell me, Mr. N, uh, do you know of Iconal or Glow? Uh, well, actually, just from the press. Was Gablinger involved in these operations? Uh, have you ever asked? Mm, no, why would I ask? I wasn't uh, really interested. Um, I just read cursory uh, parts of the blog. I, I uh, need a break now. Two minutes. Uh, ten minutes. Well, five minutes. No, ten minutes. I have a, a test. Five minutes. You note know that the witness name has now changed on the slide to the full version. Alois Neubauer. So this was six minutes. I would like to start now. Where is the witness? Can the office of the Chancellor uh, help bring the witness? The police has been asked to bring him in. That is not a joke here. We're not joking. Well, here you are. Let's uh, continue. So in Gablingen, do you also do translation services? Um, yes. Do you do that or is it 
in part it happens with us but well you know really I don't have to talk about this because it's not scope of the investigation say Mr. N do you think that this is a fun thing here uh, no I'm just uh, I don't like to be here well, yes we have that impression as well but uh, it can't be helped. Why does transmission in short not, wave? Yeah, why is it not part of the investigation? I'll help you. We are in the Bundestag. It is Wednesday. You are the only witness. You're the only witness that says this isn't scope of the investigation. I would like to be nice to you, but tell me, why is shortwave not part of this investigation? Uh, I need to talk with my legal counsel. How long does this take? How long is this going to last? Terrible. Uh, I don't think I have to talk about this, but to uh, be nice to uh, the committee. By in Gablingen, wird Shortwave transmission capture in Gablingen. Um, there's no other Five Eyes organizations involved. Therefore, it's not part of this investigation. Mr. N, uh, you have been here a couple of sessions ago. Have you ever gotten feedback from the BND of, after your last visit here? Let me guess. It's not part of the uh, investigation? Exactly. exactly. I knew you'd say this. The space theory. The space theory. We should explain. Um, this was about a theory uh, mentioned in these investigations by the Exterior Service, the BND, that capturing data via satellites was not covered by the, or did not underlie the rules of the German constitution because the actual capturing was taking part in space was taking place in space outside the jurisdiction of the German constitution which is of course a very interesting construction now Zeit the newspaper the Zeit. 14th November 2014 the BND has to operate within the bounds of law but which version of it the BND apparently um, decides itself which laws apply and which not. Um, uh, from his perspective, that seems to be very handy. But uh, the law doesn't make that distinction. If somebody decides for himself, we can put away with laws. If the BND thinks the Constitution only works for him when and the civil servants are rooted firmly on the ground with both their feet. Now, the Data Protection Commissioner of the BND is being inquired. My name is HF. I'm full legal counsel. And since two and a half years, I've, I'm a um, data privacy officer. I am. Um, Reporting to the president, I do regular checks of data privacy. Data privacy in the BND is not uh, present uh, in all parts of the BND. Uh, I am not technical. I get demonstrations. Um, I'm not a computer scientist, but I have a technical officer in the team. I just believe in. Uh, technical things, I don't, I can't check them. Data collection in Bad Eiblingen is, 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 is all... Um, it does not fall under the BND law. Because it's uh, not under the, in Germany. Foreign satellites are being eavesdropped upon. Uh, for example, over Afghanistan and Pakistan. So that's the, in a foreign country and the BND law does not apply. I have a different idea um, or position on the law, but 
I am only in a consultant role. No one has to follow my position. So, uh, under my position, uh, the capturing takes place in Bad Aiblingen, which is in Bavaria and therefore under the German law. But the leadership does not see it that way. So, where is the legal dis disagreement? The question is is the capturing at Bad Aiblingen under the scope of the BND law? And what is the leading opinion uh, at the BND? The leading opinion is that the capturing takes place abroad. I, have, I was overruled there. So there is a legal foundation, a base in law. Why does the other side just keep so stubborn? You'll have to ask the BND president about, president about this. Well, this is not about upper beats lower. You are the Data Protection Commissioner, so if a legal position does not convince you, why does the president stick to that position? That is a fundamental decision, otherwise there would be stricter rules. Ask Mr. Schindler, the president. Mr. BND President Schindler, you, of course, are a defendant of the space theory, according to which satellite capturing in Bad Aiblingen is outside the scope of German privacy law, so a legal uh, free of space free of legal rules. So there have been doubts raised by several places, but the BND stuck to that theory. Do you still keep sticking to that theory? Well, actually, I would not need to ask myself that question. It was explained to me thus when I entered into service, so someone surely checked this. I this this position in the law, which was being lived in practice, was what I found, and we do not call this the space theory, Mr. President Schindler. Well, we do like this term; it's it's kind of illustrative. In paragraph one, section one of the BND Act, it says. Now, if in the scope of this law, information, including personal data, is being registered or captured, then the capturing, processing, and use is under the paragraphs 2 and 6 and 8 and 11 of the BND Act. Now, I think that the capturing does not take place in the scope of the law. I'm not alone in this position. There are good reasons to see it this way. Well, it seems to me like paragraph 1, section 2 of the BND Act surely has to be used for anything at all. But this is not an omnipotent position or rule in law. It's just uh, it, it, when this was made, there was no Google, Twitter and social networks. Can this still be the position today with all the criticism that's been raised? Well, the practice that I found was in 2012. That was when the world was digital. The massive doubts within my house, I kind of liked. So I asked Mrs. F to, uh, I, I promoted her to the position of Data Protection Commissioner. I was very grateful to her for having this opinion of her own, but still I decided in another, I decided differently. Oh, Mr. Schindler, there is the theory of the virtual foreign country or virtual abroad, which says that capturing traffic from abroad to abroad at the Frankfurt node is actually traffic abroad. And there are lots of efforts being taken to say that telephone numbers are not personal data so that the data, that privacy legislation does not apply. There's a lot of creativity in legal interpretation to hugely expand the permissions of the BND. I'm not saying that all of this is against the law, but don't you, shouldn't you move away from this and find a clear legal basis? If uh, data protection law was applied to metadata, was that, would that be such a hindrance to the BND? The capturing in Frankfurt is diff legally different to that of satellites in Bad Aibling. Now, reasonably, uh, you should be clear of this within in the interior, domestically, there are different rules than abroad, and and there should be better rules for this. G10 applications for routine traffic should be better 
uh, regulated. And I do share your opinion on metadata. We are in a grey area legally. And in the interest of legal clarity, a new regulation, a new legal foundation would be better. But I do not share your position on satellite capturing about Ibling, and this, is take, that this takes place abroad. Mr. Burbaum, previously a G10 legal expert of the BND, G10 the law that restricts telecommunication secrecy, um, you tried to filter out G10 traffic and declare everything else as routine traffic and hand it on. Is that a trick? No, it's not a trick. This is the use of legal permissions with desired side effects. Mr. Ada, you are leading the legal branch of the BND. Are you saying that the space theory would be a model, the lived legal practice well, shouldn't it be adapted? Well, there's a difference whether I make the law or apply the law. Uh, so was there a particular practice in Bad Aibling for which a theory had to be constructed? Well, not in a scientific sense. This is a, a normal legal subsumption process. Uh, it's very sp special. The, the uh, legal branch had to check whether this was according to the law. Mr. Ada, first there was the practice, then the space theory. No, first there was the law. And then the practice, then the space theory? Well, I did say that the theory modeled what was happening. The legal evaluation has to reflect the actual facts. Well, how then do you get to this evaluation? Surely the eavesdropping devices capture signals? The uh, installation as such is in but Ibling, but that then makes it clear that the data is captured in but Ibling, or is but Ibling now in space? Uh, well, the devices have to be configured technically in a way that enables the capturing what enables to capture what happens in the satellites. It's, this is very elaborate technology, and but it, it, it follows what happens at the source of the signal. From there, the uh, path towards the Earth's surface has to be made, has to be travelled. That's in the nature of things. Mr. Ada, I still quite understand why the capturing takes place on at the satellite. Uh, if you uh, control, the control the antenna, that has nothing to do with the satellite. I don't think this is absurd at all. We follow what happens in space. But, Mr. Ada, where now do I get my sunburn? At the sun or on my skin? <laughs> well... You know, now the focus in Bad Eibling is to correct what during the transmission from the satellite is being distorted. Yes, but in Bad Eibling, I still can't see the difference. So we'll just register that we disagree. But the signal comes from Earth and always has a terrestrial relationship and uh, focus and, and the capturing is in Germany. Well, I, I don't share that. Everything comes from Earth, apart from signals from aliens. Uh, surely that, that can't ma make a legal difference. Uh, well, I, I don't want to dispute all this. The, the space theory has no majority, uh, is not a majority position. Mr. Heiss. Secret Service Coordinator in the Chancellery, the Chancellor's Office. Now, the space theory goes to the limits of our legal system, maybe goes beyond them. The data is registered and, and well processed in Bad Eibling without the scope, uh, outside the scope of the BND law. Uh, this also applies to the processing in Bad Eibling. But this has consequences that reach furthest. Uh, this data gets to the BND, which is under German law. Outside Germany, the BND law does not apply. You can dispute the interpretations, but there is no system here. With a different interpretation, the one that leads to larger security for all for our soldiers uh, is the one that is closer to us. Ah, Mr. Schindler surely will like this interpretation. 
Mr. Bourbon, you as a previous G10 lawyer of the BND, I would like to ask you, have people, do people that are not Germans have fundamental rights if they happen to be abroad there? Of course, you think that be some of these people. The BND is a German authority is, and is under German law. The secrets of to, secrecy of telecommunications does not always apply. So the secrecy of telecommunications does not apply to foreign people. Do they not uh, enjoy any protection by fundamental rights? I don't know. Are you under Article 10? That should be verified. I don't see a, a hindrance there. So a French person is making a phone call to a Belgium in Belgium in Belgium. Is the BND allowed? to surveil that without restrictions? Yes. Okay, Mr. Fritsche, the BND's interpretation of the following law is known to us. The space theory first, which means that capturing in but adding happens in space, not in Germany. Then virtual abroad. The uh, data capturing in Frankfurt is virtually abroad. And then metadata are not personal data. So that way, the BND simply excludes itself from German law. Is that a state of things that can be tolerated, Mr. Fritsche? This is why the German government is, wants to find a legal clarification. Ah, you think a simple clarification will be enough? Yes. Basic Reading. rights don't apply in space. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the public part of today's session. In 20 minutes, uh, we will have the closed session in the well-known room. Thank, Thank you very much to the uh, public, general public. I uh, conclude with uh, have a nice evening and uh, get home well. Uh, hold on, here's a document that says uh, highly classified that uh, a witness must have left this. Basic rights do not apply in space. Well, we hope that we were able to bring you some of what happened, some of the humor, some of the actual interesting arguments. So, as always, we'd love to hear from you whether you were able to enjoy this as much as we did, <laughs> or at least partly. Our hashtag on Twitter, C3T. Our Twitter account, C3Lingo. Please let us know, let us know what you think. We want more feedback. Have fun at the last day of the Congress, or if you've switched to Hacker Jeopardy, we'll try to give you that in English. There's also a Swiss-German interpretation of that, uh, but that's only inside the Congress. Okay, the encore will be next year. I would like to use this opportunity to thank Anna for the work that she did. Thank you very much. Taking notes in